So last time we talked about uh, fabless semiconductors, correct? So the point of fabless semiconductor, that detour that we took, was just to explain you how important that revelation was. Okay, fabless, because if it's fabless, which means I do what I'm good at and you do what you're good at. Okay, so I'm going back to Taiwan now, 1980s. At that time, E3, we talked about uh, Industrial Technology Research Institute. I have visited E3, by the way, during my trips to Taiwan. It was already existing uh, in 1980s. And this was kind of the revelation of the politicians in Taiwan at that time that we have to do something different. You know, we have to, we cannot be just um, assemblers of technology, okay? And which is kind of something similar we are seeing now with India. We cannot be just assemblers, right? Just because um, our hands are small, we can do fine things, but that doesn't mean that we should be perpetually assemblers, right? So they, they realized that. And they said that we need to get to the higher, you know, higher level of technology. So they, they started a company called UMC, United Microelectronics Corporation. That's what they started. And then with the help of government, uh, talks between government, they got technology from RCA. RCA was one of the very well-known high-tech companies of US. Whatever they got was a generation old. Huh? That's what they got. And they started uh, developing stuff in, in Taiwan. Again, you know, they took the technology and this just implemented. So there wasn't like a force uh, to do something new. They were just taking whatever they have and then just implementing. And uh, the project was called VLSI project. That's what they were doing. And they did some chips. Um, and they had some success at that time, okay? And then um, the whole point was to move from assembly, assemblers to actual fabrication. That's what they wanted to do uh, in Taiwan. Hmm? What was driving them at that time? Fear of China. Because in China, um, I don't want to talk about politics, what was happening at that time, but suddenly there was a availability of labor force. They're coming out of the farms, and now they wanted to do something better for their families. So uh, the labor force was available at an order of magnitude lower prices compared to Taiwan. Okay. Why did people go to Asia first of all? Why did TI and all these people went there? Because a labor cost was less. And of course their hands were smaller. And here is China where order of magnitude lower cost of labor. So they knew that there is a writing on the wall for Taiwan. Okay, so we got to do something different. So they wanted to get into uh, fabrication. So they were afraid. And there was a, you know, you got to give them credit, the politicians over there, that this fear uh, was, was really driving them to do something better. Hmm? Even then, they fell behind by about a generation in the technology, by 85. Okay, so they took the technology in 80s from RCA, Radio Corporation of America, and then by the time 80s to 85, they, they're still further backward. Okay, uh, do you understand what generation of technology means? So say, for example, um, generation of technology was one micron. So US was always on the forefront. Uh, they were developing technology because Moore's law. They wanted to get better, better, better. So the uh, channel length was reducing, right, constantly. And they were pumping in more transistors on the chip. And here, uh, Taiwan was just coming from behind and trying to do something. And they kind of fell behind. So this was noticed. Uh, and, you know, they were concerned. And there comes our, you know, hero of our story, Morris, right, Morris Chang. So um, I want to go a little bit into background of Morris, right? Uh, you know, inspiring story of Morris Chang. If you get to see interview, you, you should check it out because every time I see him talking, you know, you could see me smile right now, right? It comes up just like that, right? So 1949, you know, he was in China. He was born in China. He went around back and forth between Hong Kong. All he was trying to do was survive uh, in early part of his life. 1949, he eventually went to US uh, from China. And then first he joined Harvard. Hmm? Harvard, everybody knows, one of the top institutes. He started with economics in Harvard. About a year into the program, he got tired of it. He said, this is not what I like. So he went to MIT and he joined mechanical engineering. So here is a person who is a mechanical engineer, remember. And you guys are electrical engineers. He's a person who is in mechanical engineering. And he did his bachelor's and master's at mechanical engineering at MIT. And then he failed the qualifying exam. Uh, I went through qualifying exam, which is pretty much like uh, they are looking for reasons to fail you. Because get, here, it's very easy to get into a PhD program in India. Okay, all you have to do is bunch of courses, get a reasonable grade, and you are into a PhD program. But uh, in US or any other country for that matter, uh, they are looking for people to cut off. They, are, they fa want to fail you. Okay, 
And you can see an example, Maurice Chang failed twice, not once, twice. And if you fail twice, you are out of the school. Okay. Um, uh, so when I was giving qualifying exam, I told you about my friends, many of them failed. And there was a, I was afraid to go for a qualifying exam. Uh, because if I fail, if I fail the exam, the consequences are huge for me. Right? Of course, when we talk about failures, I'm very casual because every time I will tell you, oh, failures are good for you and all that stuff. But when it comes to your own failure, you are scared. Uh, right? So um, what, what I'm trying to tell you is that he failed twice. And then he said, mm, this is not like, okay, all right. You know, you could have said that he got depressed and he went home back to China. Mom, his mom consoled him. Nothing like that. I mean, that's what you see nowadays here is if you fail, then you're going back to your family and, you know, trying to say it's okay baby type of thing right none of that he failed twice and then uh, he uh, basically went to ti you know the story right i told you earlier in 1964 here is a person who has access to the top three schools in his career first mit second times and you can see the impact at third time stanford so at stanford he completed his uh, phd in two years that is like by itself is an amazing thing. And then, um, you know, he had his career and uh, he was at TI and uh, he was passed on uh, for the top job. He wanted to be the CEO of TI. And then uh, they said no. And then he, he got upset and he left TI. He tried a bunch of things after that. And this opportunity came to him uh, because uh, Taiwanese government, in, exclu including the prime minister, they said, boss, you come here. It was a very special invitation for him uh, to join ITRI. So he went into ITRI and then accordingly, he gave him a free check. Basically, any money, amount of money you want, you have, a, you have complete access to everything, full. Uh, because he had a unique experience in his lifetime. Um, so I hope something like that happens with us, with India, right? We find somebody. So that's a parallel story I'm developing slowly for you about India. So keep this thought in mind, what our prime minister needs to do. Uh, because we want to kind of pick up from the history and build our future. That's what I'm trying to do. You know how old was he when he went to Taiwan? He was just about the same age as I am. Okay, so you can now suddenly see uh, the difference, uh, right? He was almost close to retirement. And this was the kind of his last, uh, you know, he was 54 year old. So Itri, uh, he, he became top guy at Itri and uh, the prime minister, uh, Quattingly, all those people, they gave him a free, uh, free check, you know, whatever blank check uh, to develop whatever he wants to do. So he had uh, looked at this Mead Conway book and Mead Conway book we looked at extensively. I, if you remember, I had shown you that book, right? And what was the key concept that Conway came up with, right? Uh, she she said that you cannot be cutting ruby lith every time uh, to develop uh, you you need to let use computers to design computers that was kind of the key idea that she came up with and let's develop uh, a complete software uh, to do all this stuff so he uh, he was very influenced by meet conway book and uh, he said that you know uh, most of the companies at that time because i was i was in the industry at that time uh, the thought process was you develop the technology and you develop the designs and you ship your designs to the to the foundry which is part of your company so for example if you're intel whatever circuits you design they will be fabricated in intel i was working at motorola so all the chips that i did at motorola they were fabricated in motorola by uh, basically their own foundry and uh, so that was the that was the thing at that time and he came in he was so influenced by this book he said that you know this is not a good idea there is a Gujarati saying, um, I don't know, anybody from Gujarat here? Okay, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, Jenu kam teni kar, tenu kare, right? Bija kare to gota khai, right? So you should do what you're good at and uh, focus on only that. So for example, in this case, he decided that, you know, design guys need to do the design part. Let fabrication guys fo solely focus on fabrication and let them be independent of the whole thing. Now. Having said that, it was very difficult idea to digest at that time. Why? If you remember the fabulous example I gave you, right? The fabulous example of Max Linear. If you take time back in 20 years, that would have been impossible. The reason is that, uh, remember, let me give you a simple example where you can, you can think why this, this idea is so powerful. Let's say you took a picture. You remember the picture and printer example I gave you? 
okay so you took a picture your picture is worth you know thousands and thousands of rupees let's say because you're so good at it, okay now you want to protect that picture you want to own that picture and you want to be able to sell that picture okay to other people and you went to our uh, iit uh, market gate print shop and you asked him to print it he printed the picture happily for you very high quality and you got it back tomorrow you find the same picture all over the place why because he owns he has the picture from you right uh, do you see the point i'm trying to make here now if something like this happens when and that's the main reason why everybody wanted to keep the technology as well as the foundry part to themselves like motorola would uh, print their own designs and they would not let it go out because there was always a uh, somebody else would steal it because once the mass set is out everybody can print the money right so that that was the main thing so he he said that what i will do i will make sure that i will not design any circuits i will only do fabrication that's what morris chang decided okay so the tsmc got started after going all over the place he went all over the world and only philips gave him the technology okay philips uh, they were in europe and they invested 28% in the foundry 48% came from taiwanese government and uh, 24% came from rich people so imagine uh, our prime minister uh, narendra modi calling ambani ambani is not willing to invest in the fabs they, he makes a personal call to ambani says that you shall invest in this uh, because i have let you benefit for so long same thing uh, the taiwan prime minister did because many people were kind of they didn't understand what this fabrication business is so the prime minister made calls and he convinced everybody to pump money into this venture and that's where it got started okay so once it got started it was kind of like a state project or government project the tsmc okay remember that uh, in us it wasn't the case in us it was a organically sprouting you know uh, venture capitalist funded companies which came out so that's where the taiwan uh, semiconductor manufacturing corporation tsmc got started the key idea as i said is to separate design from foundry and then just focus on foundry um, what happened is um, what it let people do was people who were fabricating uh, they just focus on fabricating so they hired people and then they uh, they made sure that the technology that they are developing is the best okay and they didn't have to worry about designing so i came up with a new name called fabulous so fabulous is people who fabricate because fabulous is people who design right at that time uh, morris chang says that it was almost like a solution looking for a problem because he had this solution in his head he tried to convince everybody in the world none of them would agree to it gordon moore ridiculed him literally if you listen to what gordon moore said that you know what he said was morris you have had great ideas in your life but this is not one of the best ones right so it's interesting right he, he didn't give up even then imagine gordon moore telling you this right he, like uh, so solution looking for problem so he was decided that i'm going to make this successful they they got their best engineers from us train brought them back to taiwan okay and all these people started working at tsmc A relentless pursuit of improvement in technology that's what they did so started with 180 nanometer technology and slowly then 65 nanometer 45 nanometer 28 nanometer there was a problem around 28 nanometer 28 nanometer you have to go from 2d to 3d transistors we'll come to that a little bit later i have to show you some models to show you explain that to you um, eventually now we are at 2 nanometer all they did was focus on developing technology okay now i have seen this before uh, when i was developing chips i'm still developing chips but that at that time i remember when tsmc got started huh, the thought process was uh, yeah some company in china it wasn't even registering at that time uh, that they're coming up with and uh, the perception i remember i had was it's very hard to communicate with them that was that's what i had and then i would fall back i will go to motorola because it was very easy to communicate in english with them and tell them exactly what my problems are a uh, same thing i remember uh, going through with samsung it was difficult to communicate but they overcame those barriers over a period of time and they had some, they had one of the best customer service right now if you are trying to do fabrication so the promise he made morris made to all the customers of tsmc that i will never design chips interesting isn't it you are it's like you know uh, you become halwai and you will say i will never eat my halwa right type of thing so i will never design my own chips as simple as that 
um, and I will give you complete confidence in this technology that if you send me something, uh, then I will make sure I'll guard that with my life. Uh, so amazing impact, right? When you when you think about it that way, here is a company. At that time, the perception of Taiwan and China was very different. At that time, they thought that anything goes there will disappear. Correct? Okay. So in Intel, AMD, Motorola, Samsung, they all had their own own shop. They were designing and they're fabricating. So you could say that, yeah, you never know, right? Uh, if something similar comes out of the same foundry, then you are always doubting. Ki, hamara maal yaha to nahi chala gaya. Uh, you, there is a constant. So here he is TSMC, Maurice Chang said that I will not allow that to happen uh, by definition. So uh, integrity and trust is something that he really pushed uh, in the company. And you, you can see this even now. So focus on, he focused only on the foundry, which is capacity, uh, pricing and on-time delivery. So when they commit to you, uh, you send a chip to TSMC, you can monitor where your wafers are uh, daily. अभी कहाँ oxidation चल रहा है अभी ये चल रहा है gate oxide बन रहा है ये हो रहा है विया तैयार हो रहा है you can literally see the movie as the chip goes through the foundry and when is it coming to you so it's very predictable fashion in which they have done this so here is me what I'm showing you here do you see a circle in that frame the Chinese circle that's wafer do you remember I showed you a wafer last time you know the size of that wafer that was eight inches it was uh, about this size. This one is 18 inches, 18 inch CMOS wafer. And 5x number of chips I can get out of the same wafer. Why is this important? Because in the same wafer, I can get so many chips out in terms of, so manufacturing cost gets divided down by five. Okay, so amazing, right? Also, if you think about it, if I have a smaller wafer, you will get, you will get a lot of chips which are around the periphery. If you have a larger wafer, the wastage is reduced quite a lot. So it's very efficient that way. Hmm? Again, and this is me. I was visiting TSMC um, when I was in Taiwan for some time. Very interesting visit over there. And uh, this is something that I wanted to share with you. In TSMC, when you go, uh, I took a picture of that. You can't take your camera, nothing inside TSMC. Okay, they are extremely paranoid for the right reason. So everything you have, including your wallet, you have to deposit at the entrance. And then only you can go inside. And they have a right to be paranoid because they don't want anything to go outside the company. Um, so you can't take picture inside the TSMC. So um, this is something in Morris's handwriting. And um, what it says is, beyond formidable obst obstacles, a brighter future shines. I think it's a, it's a loaded uh, saying, what he has said. Uh, and it's something that all of you will, will appreciate as your life goes along, right? I don't remember the name of a person who did this artwork, but if you look at that artwork, it looks like a, a spaghetti, okay? It's the shadow of that artwork which shows everything in Morris's handwriting, which is kind of impressive. So if you see, um, there is a bluish shadow on the bottom, and that's what Morris's handwriting looks like, okay? All right, I'll stop right here. Thank you so much.